Welcome to our class today, Therapeutic Yoga. And last week, if you recall, we were focusing on the breath, um, in particular, the inhalation and a sense of expansion and spaciousness. So when we feel stress, we feel the sense of compression and um, kind of being backed into a corner. And when we use the breath to, to feel a sense of expansion, it can help to kind of release some of the stress that we're carrying in our bodies. Of course, every good inhale needs an exhale. <laughs> So this week we're going to focus on the exhale and how the exhale affects us energetically and physically. So when we exhale, there is this energetic sense of letting go, of releasing tension in the body. And so that's one really important factor in the exhalation. We're going to use a couple of techniques today with the exhale to help to, to kind of increase that effect of, of release and letting go. Uh, so you're Caroline, get... can you hear me at all? I can hear you, yes. So I can not hear, hear you. you. I'm going to hit you mute, okay? And now I, you're muted now, so you should be good. So if you just don't mm. touch anything, it should be good. Oh, you've come back on. There we go. All right. So, um, so as I said, I was gonna, I'm going to get a little bit technical, just a very little bit technical. Um, but about the effect of the exhalation, the vagus nerve, which runs from the brain um, to various parts of the body and sends information back again, is a um, very instrumental nerve in dealing with our stress. So it gives us a lot of, gives our brain a lot of information about what's going on in our bodies. And we're realizing more and more how much our bodies are part of our whole system of mind um, and emotion. And so this vagus nerve, um, when we exhale, there's a soothing effect on the vagus nerve. And when we make sound when we exhale, it has an even more soothing effect. Um, so that's sort of the energetic and, and physical. The other piece that I wanna talk about is when we inhale, we're expanding. When we exhale, we're contracting. The focus of the inhale is on the chest and the area of the lungs. When we breathe in, the diaphragm moves down, the belly sometimes moves out a little bit. When we exhale, we want to start that exhalation with gently contracting the abdomen. So the, the other effect of the exhale as well as giving us a little bit more kind of release and letting go is also we can use it to gently tone the abdominal muscles. So we're going to do some uh, postures today that help that along, that focus with the breathing. And we're going to, I'm going to invite you to, you don't you certainly don't have to make some sound when you exhale. And the sound is super simple. It's just a humming sound. It can be very, very quiet or a little louder if you like. <laughs> Excuse me. And the effect of this humming breath, as I said, is, is relaxing to the vagus nerve. So it tones the vagus nerve, which helps to relax the system. And the yogis use this breath uh, in ancient times. You know, I'm not exactly sure what the effect was then. I'm assuming it was similar, but... Um, Peter Levine, who's done a lot of um, work on trauma, has introduced this breath and some research around it, this humming breath that allows us to calm and to relax the nervous system. So we're gonna start there today. You can sit either on a chair or um, on the floor, whatever you're comfortable with. And we'll start with focusing on the breath. So getting yourself into a comfortable seated position. Take your time to make sure that you're quite comfortable. So I invite you, first of all, to simply notice your breath as it is. So you're not changing the breath, you're not manipulating the breath in any way. You're just tuning in to what is present right now. So you can close your eyes if you like. Maybe tune in to the expanded feeling of the inhale as we were looking at last week. And as you exhale, simply let the breath go. So you don't need to push or force the breath in any way. So we're just letting the breath come and go naturally with a little bit of our attention on the chest area on the inhale. 
maybe feeling the belly gently move back as it naturally does on the exhale. And if it helps you to bring a hand to either or both places, you can do that. So inhale, the sense of expansion. Exhale, a softening, maybe a feeling of gently drawing in with the belly. Maybe that's not what happens naturally for you and that's totally fine. So just tuning into what is. Notice if there's tension around your jaw. For me, that's really common. I catch myself clenching my jaw on a fairly regular basis. The other one is shoulders up a little bit toward the ears. So as you exhale and with this feeling of softening, see if you can soften your jaw, your shoulders, or wherever it is for you that you particularly hold tension. And take a moment to just take a snapshot of this, um, this moment in your being. So how you're feeling right now, so physically, mentally, emotionally. And then we're going to try a little bit of this humming breath that I mentioned, this breath that's about really releasing and toning the vagus nerve. So on your exhale, just as quiet or as loud as feels comfortable to you. And if that doesn't feel comfortable to you, you can always just exhale normally and, and just breathe normally. So if you're joining me with the humming breath, you're gonna inhale normally. Any note that you like, and you'll continue with that. So inhale normal. Exhale, humming. And let that go and breathe normally for a moment. And again, just take a little mental snapshot of what you notice now after a minute or so of humming breath. And you may not notice any difference. And if you feel a little lightheaded, it um, is quite normal, especially when we focus on the breath. Sometimes the tendency is to breathe more deeply than we're, when, than we're used to. So there may be a little bit of hyperventilation, which is not um, unsafe, you just want to uh, breathe normally and you'll, that lightheadedness should return to normal height. So now as we move into the cat-cow movement, 
So we have an inhale movement, which is the arching of the back and this expansion of the chest. We have an exhale movement, which is a rounding of the back and a drawing back of the belly. So it's what naturally happens with the breath is exaggerated here. And we can exaggerate it even a little bit more with our intention. So on your inhale, you can think about drawing the shoulders back, even opening the elbows a bit to make room into the sides of your body. And breathing into all of that space around the ribcage where the lungs literally are. And then as you exhale, very gently drawing the belly button back towards your spine as if you're trying to draw in all around the abdomen from front, back and sides as you round and bring the head down. Inhale and opening, making space. Exhaling, drawing in, belly button moving back, moving into the sides. And this should be a very relaxed movement. So you're not squeezing as hard as you can, but just gently drawing in as you exhale and creating space for the expansion on the inhale. And I'll leave you to do a few more breaths at your own pace. And then let's just pause for a moment, take a few normal breaths. And we're going to do that cat cow again. And this time, if it feels right for you, when you're at the end of your exhale with the belly and the, the sides and the back drawing in toward the center, you could choose to hold your breath out for a moment, maybe one or two seconds, just enough to feel that sense of drawing in and contraction. And then when you inhale, feeling that spaciousness that is a result of that gently closing in and contracting. So either just normal breathing as we did, or if it feels right for you, you can hold after the exhale for one or two seconds as we go through the next round. So inhaling, creating space, expanding, exhale, drawing in towards the center of your belly, maybe holding the breath for a second or two, and then inhaling and expanding into all of that space. The chest, the belly, wherever the breath goes. And then exhale, gently drawing in. A few more breaths at your own pace. If anything feels uncomfortable, modify so that you're comfortable. Make the movement smaller. Let the breath be just natural and easy if that feels better for you. And then let's come back to a neutral spine and take a few normal breaths. You can close your eyes if you like. And just notice the effect of that little bit of awareness we brought to the breath, the humming, the feeling of expansion, the feeling of contraction. And just notice how your body feels, how your breath feels now when you just let it go back to its natural rhythm. And then we're going to use that same exhale and contracting gently, gently contracting. We don't want to create tension, just this gentle contraction. And with every contraction, we also want to release on the inhale, right? So there's this misconception that if we hold our core tight, our stomach muscles tight all the time, that they'll get stronger. And the fact is that in order to have strong muscles anywhere in the body, we need to contract and release, contract and release. So when we hold muscles tight all the time, we're actually cutting off blood flow and oxygen to those muscles. We need to contract, right? or we need to relax as well as contract. So in this one, we're going to use the contraction of the uh, middle of the body around the abdomen to allow the body to twist. When we come back to center, inhaling, we're going to relax. So the hands can be on the hips or on the shoulders, wherever it's more comfortable for you. You'll take a big breath in here, lengthen the spine, 
And as you exhale, using this core area to draw in and turn the body. And then you'll inhale, relax and come to center. Exhale, gently draw in through the core as you twist. Inhaling and exhaling. You're moving slowly, focusing on relaxing and expanding on the inhale. Gently contracting and twisting on your exhale. So you might feel your abdominal muscles waking up a little bit. The relaxation is as important as the contraction here. The expansion, the inhale, as important as the exhale. And when we move slowly, it brings even more focus to the areas that we're working on. For the last couple of rounds, only if it feels right for you, you can hold for one or two seconds after your exhale. If not, just keep moving freely with the breath. Or just keep moving freely and let the breath be. Right. And then let's come back to the center, relax. Again, pause for a moment, tune in. You can close your eyes and notice what sensations are present now after really focusing on the breath, the inhale and the exhale, adding some twisting to the side abdominal muscle. So this gentle contraction with the breath to engage the core a little bit. So now we're going to raise the arms up. You can raise them straight up or to the sides, whatever's comfortable, and let the body relax forward over the legs. Let the lower back relax, let the head and neck relax. And then coming up again. So you can inhale if you wanna coordinate your breathing as you lift, exhale as you come forward over the legs, any amount that feels comfortable for you. The breath is totally relaxed now. We're not trying to Manipulate the breath in any way, just letting the body soften after the effort of the twist. <clears throat> if it feels good for you, you can stay in the forward bend this time, either with your elbows or hands on your thighs, or you can. Drop down a little further, let your chest come to your thighs, head relax, neck soften. So now no particular technique with the breath, but see if you can be aware of where you feel the breath moving in your own body. There's absolutely no right or wrong way here to feel the breath. So I invite you to simply tune into the sensations that are present for you. You're ready to come up if it helps. So you can bring your hands first onto your thighs, lift up, and then we'll raise the arms up overhead. And then reach out to the sides, big circle, extending your reach all the way around, bringing the hands back down. And you can let the hands rest on your thighs or in your lap. We'll turn the head to one side, just giving a little release for the neck slowly sweeping across the front of your chest to come to the other side and slowly sweeping back. Don't worry about your breathing here, but do make sure you're breathing as you move side to side. If it's okay for your neck, you can make a full circle. And as you're doing that, as always, I caution you not to lose control of your head behind you. So you wanna stay in control of your head all the time. And the head is just coming up over the shoulders and around. If you find tight areas, you're welcome to stop and play around, do a little movement. 
Maybe little circles around the areas that are tight. Think about softening and dropping your shoulders down. <clears throat> right, and then eventually make your way back to the center. You can let your arms come down to your sides. If you're on the ground, your fingers might come to the ground. That's fine. We'll lift the shoulders up. Make the neck disappear, take a breath in, exhale and release. We don't wanna lift the shoulders up so much that there's pain or tension, but feeling that contraction, that drawing up action of the shoulders and then release with an exhale. So as I said earlier, my shoulders tend to creep up when I'm feeling either cold, <laughs> it's kind of cold today, or stressed out, or sometimes just for no reason. I noticed that my shoulders are up around my ears. So we're going to exaggerate that, holding up for a moment and then releasing. And then you can add a kind of pushing down with the shoulders as you release, gently lifting. And if you want, you can add a circular movement, rolling the shoulders back now, and then lifting them from the front, rolling back. And I encourage you to really take your time with this movement and notice your shoulders. So does the right shoulder feel different from the left shoulder? That is definitely the case for me. Do you hear or feel any clicking, crunching or grinding in your shoulders? Again, that's pretty normal for me. If it's painful, you may want to alter your movement. And then you can try going the other way as well and see what shifts for you, what changes. So it's really just tuning in, coming back to the theme from a couple of weeks ago, of paying attention to the body. So bringing all of these themes together as we move. All right, and then let's come back to the center. Pause again, you can let your hands rest on your thighs. Notice, what are you aware of now in your neck and shoulders? What has shifted? Or maybe what are you aware of that's stuck in that area? <clears throat> And then your hands a shake, your arms a shake, and shake them to the sides, overhead, in front. Just give them a really good shake out. Good. And then let your hands come to rest for a moment. And again, I invite you to pause for a moment and notice what woke up in your arms. What do you notice from doing a little bit of shoulder movement, a little shaking? and then circling the wrist. So when we rotate our joints, we're lubricating them. It's the way that the synovial fluid gets into the joints is through movement and these gentle rotational movements, even though they don't feel like much is happening often, um, super important and therapeutic to keep everything moving, the fluids moving in our bodies. Right. <clears throat> interlace the fingers and then we're going to lift one elbow and make a little wave with the hands lifting the other elbow and really whatever wave kind of happens for you is is fine so just try to find a little movement in the wrists and hands if your wave is going one way you can try going the other way And then coming back to the center, holding the hands and doing some movement here. So some circles, some side to side, just moving the wrists around. Okay. And then just for fun, you've most likely, probably 99% of you have gripped in the same way that you always grip your hands, right? With whichever finger is forward. So I invite you to unclasp your hands and grip the other way with the other finger, other thumb forward. And it'll probably feel quite strange. And then again, try that wave action or just the twisting and moving of the wrist. See how it feels when we kind of break things up a little bit, change things a little bit. Right, and then you can press the palms out, shoulders down and then release. 
and let the palms sit facing up on your thighs, shoulders rest comfortably. Again, I invite you to pause and notice. What do you feel? What are you aware of in your hands, your wrists, your arms, your shoulders? Wonderful. So back to the breath. On the exhalation, we were we started with this cat cow and working with the exhalation. And naturally, there's a, a drawing in on the exhalation, right? As we gently squeeze the breath out, there's this natural contraction. And so we can actually work with that natural contraction to create a little more toning, a little bit more um, awareness of certain areas and muscles in the body. So here we're going to start by raising the arms up. You can breathe in here, and as you exhale, you know, round the back a little bit and draw one knee in toward your chest. So that action of exhaling helps to bring the knee in, and then you'll inhale, lift up, exhale, knee in. I guess if you're sitting on the floor, it's going to be a little bit different. You'll want to have your feet flat on the floor in front of you, not cross-legged to start with. So exhale, draw in. Inhale, lift. As you draw in, the belly naturally moves back and naturally comes in toward the chest as you exhale. And you're using the muscles of your core and your hip flexors, the muscles that draw the leg up. A couple more. Right. And the next time you've got one knee in towards your body, you can stay there, gently squeeze in. You can clasp your hands if you like, or hold them over your knee, or if it's more comfortable behind your thigh. And then see if you can sit up a little taller, circle your ankle around. One way and then the other. Great, and then let's release. We'll lift up again, breathing in. As you exhale, rounding, bringing the other knee in. Again, you can think about sitting up a little taller and circling the ankle around. One way, the other. And then release. Let's come back to the cat cow movement that we started with. And again, focusing on this expansion on the inhale, drawing the shoulders back, and then gently drawing in with your exhale. Again, if you feel discomfort anywhere in your body, you know, especially around the abdomen or lower back, you're just gonna let the breath be really soft and easeful. And then if it felt good to, to hum with your breath, you can add that in here for the next few rounds. You inhale like this, exhale. One more here. Okay, and coming back to neutral spine. So before we change positions to come to stand, which we'll do in a moment, I invite you once more to if you like, close your eyes, tune in and notice. Notice what you feel in your belly. Notice what you feel in your chest, your shoulders, your back body, neck, arms, and this whole area that we've been working with, upper body. 
noticing what's present now. And then when you're ready, we'll come to stand. If you have a chair handy, it might be helpful for you. It's never strictly necessary, but it can be helpful. If you have a chocolate lab, it can often be unhelpful, <laughs> but very cute. So coming to stand, we'll start in Tadasana with the feet about hip width apart also called mountain pose in English. Just take a moment to notice your body now in the standing position. Notice what you're aware of, what you feel, what sensations are present, how your knees feel, maybe after sitting for a while, especially if you're sitting cross-legged, how your hips feel. We'll do a little bit of movement here just to kind of warm things up after sitting for a while by taking the feet apart and bring your hands to your hips. Make sure your knees are soft and do a few circles here. And I invite you to go really slowly. And as we've been doing, notice, tune in and see what you feel. I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but it's always a good reminder that some parts of your body, you may have very little feeling or even lots of your body, there may be very little sensation. That is quite normal. And so just noticing, hmm, I feel kind of numb here. And sometimes we, our brains kind of numb a part of our body uh, that we don't want to feel the pain in. Right? So it's sort of a natural anesthetic. So it's not a bad thing, but we can, Use it just to notice. If you've only been circling one direction, go the other way as well. And I'm really aware of how it feels quite different as I go around the circle. There's all kinds of different sensations in my hips today. And then let's gradually come back to the center. So, the next part, it may be, as I said, helpful to have a chair or it could be um, a wall if you feel unsteady with your balance, um, just to have it there for, um, you know, for, for confidence. Uh, I encourage you not to use it unless you need to. So don't just sort of default holding onto your chair. See if you can find a little bit of balance on your own. And then if you need the chair or the wall, it's there for you. So the if you're using a chair or the wall, we're going to have the leg that you stand on be the one closest to that. And again, if you can start without the chair, that's great and it's there if you need it. So shifting your weight onto that foot, we're gonna lift up onto the toes of the other foot and some circles here. And you can come up onto the toes, maybe bring the hands out of the way as you rotate the knee open and then rotate the knee towards the other leg. So you're swiveling your toes on the ground to open that hip and to bring it in. So you can do the same thing if you like, lifting the foot off the ground, opening, knee goes out, foot turns in. And the other way, knee comes in, foot goes out. So it can be a big movement or a little movement. If you need your chair or the wall, go ahead. Okay. And then bring that foot down. So I invite you to notice, did you hold your breath? <laughs> and when we go to the other side, um, I invite you to just keep breathing. So <clears throat> I find it helpful to move the chair or turn my body so that the leg is on the inside closer to the chair. And then you'll come onto the toes of the other foot. And again, you can do some circles around. So my toes are still on the ground now. And circle the other way. And then with your toes on the ground, you can swivel 
in internal rotation, external rotation. And again, if you want, you can do this same action with your foot lifted. So it's internal. This is internal, foot out, knee in, external, foot in, knee out. And then come back to both feet. And give your legs a little shake, just shake on the spot, letting go of any tension that comes in. So when we're doing standing work, it's not uncommon for the leg you're standing on to feel really um, tired. So we'll come back to the first side. So now we're going to work with these muscles here in the front of the hip, the hip flexors. And we're going to work with just the outside. So if you're using a chair, again, you can hold on if you need to, but have it just there for some support if you need it. So we'll raise the outside arm up and then you can either just come to your toes as you bring your hand to your thigh or, and then drop down as you lift up or you can lift the leg any amount. So it could be just off the ground or it could be lifting right up in toward the chest. So inhale and really lift, press down into the heel, lengthen the whole side, and then exhale, you'll gently contract. The exhale will help you to bring the knee up any amount. Inhale, lift, and you wanna really find that arching lift, and then exhale, drawing in. So you're using your core and your hip flexor muscles, these muscles in front that naturally are going to contract with your breath, to bring that knee up. You might start to feel those muscles working a little bit. If you're comfortable here, you can stay for a couple of breaths. It may mean bringing your hand onto the wall or chair. So probably I'm feeling these muscles working a little bit. If you want more and only if it feels like, yeah, this is really good and I wanna work those muscles a little bit more, you can let go with your hand on your leg. And it doesn't matter how high your leg is. You know, feel these muscles working a little bit and then I invite you to slowly lower down. Right, when both feet come to the ground, you can pause there for a moment. Notice one side versus the other, what you're aware of, tuning into sensation. And then again, I'm going to switch sides. You can just turn around or switch sides or whatever works for you. And then again, lifting the outside arm up, breathing in, exhale, either keeping the toes on the ground, hand to the thigh, or you can lift the foot, maybe onto just off your toes or lifting any amount that's available to you. So again, coordinating the breath, if that feels right for you, inhale up, exhale, use your abdominal muscles, use your hip flexors to help you lift. This time, if you like, you can stay wherever you're at. So it doesn't matter if your toes are on the ground or not, wherever is comfortable. Keep the breath moving, feel the strength, mostly you know, the hip flexors working, the abdominal muscles a little bit as well. And then releasing, lifting up, and releasing the arm. So again, pause for a moment and notice, what are you aware of? Back to the other side. It's a lot of moving your chair around. Hopefully your chair is not too heavy. Um, I guess you could have one on either side if you have more than one chair in your house. So again, we're working with the outside leg. We're gonna come on to the toes. Again, swivel the knee out to the side. And then you can stay here with your foot beside the other foot on the ground. You can bring your foot in closer 
Again, only hold on if necessary. It's so easy to use this as a crutch, right? So see if you can find your balance here without holding on if you need to, by all means do. Notice if you've locked your standing leg and maybe bring a little softness there. And if you want more here, you can lift your foot onto your calf. Keep drawing that knee back. And if you're really feeling balanced here, the hands can come together in tree pose. Make sure you're breathing. It doesn't matter how you breathe, you just wanna breathe. And then as you're ready, release, pause for a moment. If you're using a chair and you want to move it to the other side, you can do that. So that's a bit of a workout in itself. Right? So I should say, when you're moving your chair, face your chair, pick it up, turn, and bring it down. Right? If I go like this, which I'm inclined to do, and twist with it, I'm actually putting my back in a more compromised position than when I pick it up, turn my body, and bring it back down. So just a little tidbit about moving really anything that's, you know, depends how heavy your chair is. It's not so heavy. <clears throat> So coming to the other side, you're going to come on to your toes, rotate the knee out, you can bring the foot in closer, which is going to make it a little more challenging for balancing, and even more challenging is to lift the foot onto the calf, you want to avoid pressing against your knee. So again, if you need to, please hold on, think about this knee drawing back, heart opening, maybe bringing the hands together. And breathing. Right, and then let's release. And then you can give everything a little shake. Here, if you like, you can use the chair to um, support you in your forward bend. If you, um, if you don't need it, that's fine. You can bring your hands to your thighs or reach towards the ground. So if you're using your chair, you'll face the chair, soften your knees. Inhale, lift and find that little expansion, lift in your heart, and then exhale, forward bend. Soften your knees, relax your spine, relax your neck. Inhale and lift. And that little lift in the heart. Exhale, soften as you come forward. If you like, you can stay in the forward bend. So here, options, if you don't want to use the chair, hands on the thighs or elbows on the thighs, or relaxing toward the ground, if that's right for you. You can hold your elbows with opposite hands, if you like. Or let the elbows rest on the thighs, whatever feels good. You can take a few breaths here. And then coming all the way up, reaching the overhead, and then letting the arms float down to your sides. Hmm. All right, so you can move your chair out of the way if you've been using a chair and make your way down onto the ground. Good job. As you come down onto the ground, take your time. If you need some support under your head, you can use a cushion or a folded blanket. And again, as you come down, let your hands rest on your body, one a little lower, one a little higher, so you can feel movement around the rib cage and the belly. And as you get settled, just notice your breath. So there's nothing you need to do here. Tuning into the breath as it is.
Feel the movement under your hands, doesn't matter where it is, there's no right or wrong. And then again, we're going to bring a little bit more attention to the exhalation. So you can bring your hands to the abdominal area. Try to make sure that your elbows are on the ground. So you don't want to be sort of lifted up, holding onto your belly, but elbows on the ground, even if that means you're just on the sides of your abdomen, that's fine. So we want the elbows on the ground to be really relaxed. So taking a breath in, you might feel some movement in your belly and that's fine. And then as you exhale, gently press into your feet. Think about the belly button just naturally dropping back towards your spine. And you can add just a very minutest little bit of contraction, a feeling of drawing in from the sides, the front, and the back of your abdominal area. As you inhale, relax. Let the breath move wherever it moves on your inhale. And then exhale. Connecting it to that pressing down into the feet, drawing in through the abdominal area. Gently, gently, gently. And then inhale to relax. Gently squeezing. And relax. So the relaxation on the inhale is as important, if not more important, than the gentle contraction on the exhale. So a few more breaths with that awareness. Okay, let that go for a moment, just breathe normally. For the next one, we'll work with one leg and arm at a time, so one thigh. So you'll raise the arm up. And again, it can be straight overhead, it can be bent, it can be out to the side, whatever's comfortable for you. Optional here to straighten the leg as you pull, uh, draw the arm overhead. You can also keep the knee bent. So we're going to be lifting the leg and bring the hand to the thigh or behind the thigh or over the shin if your knee is bent. And then releasing. So the inhale, you're gonna release and lengthen. The exhale, using that abdominal strength, gently draw the knee in. It can be a little bit straighter or bent. You can also start with a bent knee, which is going to be easier. So if it feels like any strain with a straighter leg, bent knee. Either way, a couple more. So you're inhaling as you extend out, exhaling as you draw in. This is the last one. And then we'll release that foot back to the floor. Pause for a moment, notice the side that you've worked, shoulder, hip, the side of the torso, whatever is, whatever sensations are available, notice. And then we'll do the other side. So stretching the arm up or out to the side, leg bent or straight. You know, breathe in in that extended position. Use your core to gently draw the leg in, hand to knee. Inhale, extend any amount to the straighter the leg is, the more challenging it is to lift. Find the version that works for you. Inhale, expanding, exhale, and drawing in.
And you can hold the knee for a couple of breaths. Next time you bring it in over or behind the knee, whatever is comfortable. And then when you're ready, releasing to the ground. Let the arms come to your sides now, just away from the body so that they're comfortable. Feet underneath the knees. Again, wherever they're comfortable, could be a little closer or further, depending on what feels right for you. Setting up for a gentle bridge pose. So we worked a lot today to contract the front of the body using the exhale. We also worked on expanding and a little bit of back bend with the inhale. And so now we'll work a little bit with bridge pose to open the front of the body a bit more before we, um, to bring back balance before we touch the shavasana. So you can start by pressing into your feet, exhaling, feeling that sense of drawing in through your core. And then as you inhale, gently press into your feet and take as many breaths as you like to lift the body. If it feels comfortable for you to stay in that lifted position, stay for a few breaths. For some of you, raising the arms a little higher might feel good. You can feel a little more expansion in the front of the body. It doesn't matter how high you lift. If you want to lift a little higher and that feels good for you, great. If you want to be just barely off the ground and that feels good for you, then that's great too. And then slowly make your way back to the earth. Arms wherever they're comfortable. Stretch both your legs out. So again, looking for some length in the front of the body, bringing the arms to the thigh. Take a breath in and raise the arms any amount. They don't have to come to the floor. Just raising them up overhead and then bringing them back down. Toes point at the ceiling, press your heels down, inhale and lengthen, pressing down almost like you're trying to lift your hips up and then relax completely as the arms come down. Take a breath or two here and we'll do that one more time. So heels down, toes up, we're pressing into the heels, lifting the arms. Imagine you're gonna lift the hips, but don't actually lift them. And then as you exhale, arms come down, legs relax, feet fall away from each other and take another few breaths here to just notice, notice what's present. And then bending the knees. And take the arms a little bit away from the body and we're going to work with the twist and we're only going to move on the exhale. And I believe we did this this way last week. So you'll inhale in the center. Exhale, let your knees go to one side. You can turn your head the opposite direction if you like. Stay there as you breathe in. And then exhale, come back to center. Stay there as you breathe in. Exhale, go the other way. Inhale as you stay there. Exhale back to center. Inhale here and continue at your own pace. Only moving when you're exhaling, staying stationary when you're inhaling, but also the Reminder that if you want to breathe freely or breathe in a different way that feels more comfortable to you, that is absolutely fine. Finish the round you're on. If you remember which side you went to first, you can go to the other side last to be even. But if you don't remember, just coming back to center if you're ready. You might want to lift your hips again briefly 
to bring the hips back down so it feels like your hips and your spine are nicely aligned again after the twist. And then bringing the knees up into your chest, letting one hand rest on each knee. Now draw the knees towards you with your exhale. And let the knees move away with your inhale. And if it's possible for you, and if you are coordinating with the breath, you can think about the breath coming first. So you start to exhale and then the knees come in. You start to inhale. And it's almost like your inhale is pushing the knees away. Exhale, belly moves back, spine to the ground, knees coming in. If you need more breath, take two breaths to do each movement. So you can really stay connected and tuned into what you're feeling as you do this. If there's other movements that would feel good here for you, if you want to rock side to side or circle your knees or anything else that may feel good to you before you're ready to come into Shavasana for a few minutes, just take your time to move in whatever way would feel good. Whenever you feel ready, you can start to make your way to stillness. Lying down is the usual preferred position for Shavasana, but sitting up is another option if you want to be a little bit more alert in your relaxation. So just go ahead and find the position that's going to be best for you. And do make sure that you're warm enough as always. It's Pretty much impossible to relax if you're cold. Your body naturally tenses up. So getting what you need in order to be as comfortable as possible. Making little adjustments as you need to, to allow your body to really settle. So we brought a lot of awareness to the breath today. We are focusing on the inhale from <clears throat> our class last week, as well as the exhale and this gentle drawing in and contraction of the abdominal, lower back and waist area. Now I encourage you to completely let go of any control of the breath. So let your breath just be natural as natural as you can while still noticing that you're breathing. So we tend to try to manipulate the breath a little off when we make it a bit longer when we're paying attention to it. <clears throat> but as much as possible, just not interfering with the breath. Just wanna remind you there's no right or wrong way to breathe. There's no right or wrong sensation that you should be feeling as you breathe or move or anything else. And a big part of the practice, the mental practice of yoga is accepting what is. So when we feel restriction somewhere, instead of forcing or pushing against it, we can relax and open and accept and be curious about what this restriction is. Whether that's physical, in the body or the breath, whether that's mental or emotional, when we meet resistance, there's always some beautiful, deep teaching in there. When we can relax and we can be open to that resistance, not forcing or fighting. So I invite you to just let the breath go, let go of resistance or notice resistance if it's there. And see if you can tune into the energy of your exhale. So the exhale energy is a softening energy generally, a letting go, a sinking down, a releasing. 
as you exhale, can you notice where you may have carried tension with you through the practice and into Shavasana? Can you soften with that exhalation? Can you relax and let go? Where you meet resistance, can you be curious and open? The weight of your head sink down, the shoulders and arms released and relaxed to the hands. If you're lying down, feel where your upper back meets the ground. And invite some softening between the shoulder blades. softening through the whole torso, especially the abdominal area, the sides of the waist and the lower back, where we were bringing some awareness and contraction in our practice. So bring as much softening and ease and letting go to this middle section of your body as you can. Remember it's softening and releasing the tension tones the muscles as much as the contracting and holding. Let the weight of your pelvis sink down and let the muscles of your buttocks relax as much as possible. The hip flexors in the front of the hips that we worked today, see if you can soften in that area. Relax your thighs, front, back, inner thighs, outer thighs. Relax your knees, feel your kneecaps even drop a little. <clears throat> Relax your calves and shins, your ankles, your feet, even your toes. And I'll share with you the same chant that we looked at last week that honors the body and the breath. When we really bring our attention, when we accept what is without creating resistance and force, that we allow our inner light to shine. So I invite you as you listen to the chant today to simply notice, notice the inhale, notice the exhale, your mind will wander. When your mind wanders, the invitation is to notice and bring it back to your breath. Over and over again. It may be tempting to feel frustrated if your mind is busy, but the practice is not about keeping the mind on the breath. The practice is noticing when it's left the breath and then bringing it back over and over. So if your mind wanders, that's actually giving you more practice. So noticing the inhale, noticing the exhale, bringing your attention back when it wanders as you listen to the chant and in a little bit of silence afterwards. Mm -hmm. Andamaya me shudyantam Jyotiraham Viraja vipapma Bhuya sagasvaha Pranamaya Meshur 
Jyotiraham Viraja Vipama Bhuya Sakasvaha For our last three conscious breaths here, bringing the attention back if it's wandered. Three more breaths with your attention on the breath, feeling the inhale, feeling the exhale. And then if it feels right for you, you can gradually deepen the breath. Just make the breath a little bit fuller, never straining or forcing, absolutely. Just to encouraging the breath to fill the space. Exhale completely. And when you feel ready, you can bring in some movement if you're ready to move. If not, you can stay where you are for a little longer and continue to integrate the practice through Shavasana. Gradually stretching, moving, whatever would feel good. Eventually, you can roll onto your side when you're ready. Pause for a moment and guide yourself as you're ready back to sitting, taking your time, no rush. And again, if you want to stay with the integration a little longer, five or so minutes for Shavasana may not be enough for you, you might need a little longer, take that time. Wherever you are, you can bring the hands together at the heart. So our breath is this beautiful and rich and powerful tool that we carry with us everywhere we go. Our breath can help bring energy. It can help to relax us. It can help to bring mindfulness and attention. We have this very powerful tool to increase our vitality by letting go of stress with the exhale, by increasing space and expansion on the inhale, and by bringing mindfulness. Um, and we also looked at this humming breath, which also helps to tone the vagus nerve, which helps to calm the nervous system. So, so many beautiful little tools with the breath. And I encourage you to use those. They don't have to stay on the mat. They're useful in everyday life. Very simple. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste.